thought I would do another gardening video um, as I was looking around once again there's not a lot of resources on how to adapt gardening for really hot and dry climates but there is amazing potential here because when places are really hot and dry their soil hasn't been usually if you're outside of town or in kind of a new area that was recently developed or that wasn't developed at all the soil hasn't been stripped of resources by previous years and other people being there also most people haven't done a lot of research in hot and dry climates and gardening and as I was looking through the list of which videos people were looking at for mine the hot and dry and and how to water videos were um, those were getting quite a bit of demand compared to the others um, and I think that's because there's not a lot of people who've done experiments in that I'm what you would call an experimental self-made gardener I do my own experiments I do my own things I don't just look at a book I do read I love to read actually and I like research but I do experiments to figure out what I'm going to do. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what you can do in your watering scenario some more. First off, um, where I'm at, we use Fahrenheit, not Celsius. If you're outside the US, generally you use Celsius. For purposes of this video, you're going to need to kind of try and adapt yourself and look at what a Fahrenheit thermometer um, looks like compared to your Celsius degree markers and that's because this video is going to be talking about how you can pick out how many times per day you're going to water based off of what your max and min temperatures are going to look like so first off your plants will grow faster if you're watering during uh, daylight hours. I'm not sure why that is, but when I previously, when I used to water at night, it didn't work as well. They would grow faster if I was watering during the day. I do think part of that has to do with dehydration though. And also we're identifying that the hottest parts of the day, no matter where you live, are generally going to be between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, it is more especially true to say between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. And the first part of adapting your watering scenario is identifying the hottest parts of your day. So the hottest parts of your day are going to be 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. And then on a lesser scale, 11 a.m. to like 4.30 ish. Now the reason you want to identify that is so you can figure that will help you to figure out how much you can get away with. The second part of this is looking at your plant size. If your plant is only six inches tall, it can't absorb more water than its total size. It can only absorb a small amount. Um, even when they get bigger, they can only, it's like your own body you if you're five foot seven and 200 pounds you couldn't drink 100 pounds of water plants it's on a similar thing where they're biological systems they can only absorb so much so the point of this video is to try and get you to think about how you can adapt instead of doing really large one lump sum watering scenarios to adapt and change that into several really small watering times per day and that this works it, it really works the advantage of a home garden that's not on a really large acreage is you can use your elbow grease to water several times a day but you can't do that if you have like a hundred acres or or 500 acres or 50 acres because you just can't stretch your elbow grease that much but this is also a good chance for I mean if you're doing homeschool or 
you're raising kids, you can bring the kids in to help them to see what's going on. Help them to understand the theory and why you're doing stuff because it will help them and they can get excited about it. And you can you also want to show them contrasting examples of um, what you're comparing against and the bad examples. Okay, so back to your watering. So let's say your let's say your forecast for the day says it's going to get to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. When you break that down, at 90, uh, at about 90 degrees, uh, it gets so hot you could probably water actually four, three or four times a day. And when you start to water during those temperatures, okay, you you put the water out, and then you leave, and let's say you come back an hour later, you will see that the ground has already swallowed up the water, and then it's significantly evaporated the surface of the ground enough that it's starting to dry out okay and that's what you're looking for you're watching the ground around the plant the plants and you're trying to spot how quickly the ground starts to dry out and that is your key point what you're looking for to determine um, how many times you can water and get away with it when the temperature gets above like close to 90 degrees the opportunity opens up that you could water three or four times for me I'm a little bit older so it's too hard for me to try and it's too hard for me to try and test five times a day but if I was in some place like Arizona or New Mexico or Southern California or even Texas you could you could try five times a day because it comes down to after you water come back at an hour later when and even two hours later and see what the surface of the ground around the plant looks like how fast did the water dry out and evaporate the faster it's evaporating the more you can come back now as the temperature drops you're going to see the opposite as the temperature drops, the water is staying on the surface of the ground and around the plant for a much longer period. So between, this is a rough estimate, between the temperatures of 70 degrees up to like mid-85, it's possible for the ground to stay wet for a little bit longer. And this means you might only get maybe two times per day where you you know where you could water and have it you know stay there um, before it dries out um, this is now whatever time you water you're still going to be putting in the wood chips and the mulch around the plants uh, where I'm at it's hot and dry we have to mulch, we have to put down wood chips or wood scrap or you know some kind of insulating material to keep the roots of the plant cool. Um, don't forget that because you're still doing that with this but um, I've got other videos talking about. Okay but the basic idea is when it starts to hit about maybe 65 degrees up to like 85 degrees or 80 degrees you might only get two maybe two times per day to water above like 80 or 85 it starts to transition to you could probably do three times and similarly below about 65 degrees something like that the water at that point the water will stay on the ground so long that you might only be able to water once a day it's particularly true that when the temperature hits about 50 degrees the water is staying on the ground almost permanently I mean the ground doesn't dry out very good at all and at that point you have to be kind of careful about watering because the ground stays it can get swampy 
and it can mess up the plants if you have too much water. You're not looking for trying to turn the wall. You don't want a swamp. You don't want to drench the plants. You're just trying to keep them supercharged. So that's uh, the thought you could do on this. And this is especially going to benefit places that are really hot and dry, places that don't have a lot of water. Now you're also going to have to factor in the already existing groundwater if you're in an area that's not hot and dry, but those kind of places can benefit from this kind of thinking also. Um, that's uh, it for now. Um, thank you for listening and subscribing.